66 million years ago, the most famous mass extinction event of all time took place, suddenly wiping out all the non-bird dinosaurs and a whole host of other ancient lineages of fascinating prehistoric organisms. But, although their giant and not-so-giant relatives had perished, a group of dinosaurs known as the birds made it through to the other side, and it wasn't long until they began to grow to large sizes again, recovering some of the niches left vacant by the destruction of their ancestors. One of the more famous groups of giant avians that lived just after the end Cretaceous mass extinction event were the terror birds, or forest rockets, huge flightless carnivores that terrorised the inhabitants of South America, and later parts of North America, for over 60 million years. But there was another kind of giant flightless birds that independently evolved also not that long after the mass extinction, the massive Gastornis, which I would like to call the terror duck. Gastornis is a truly intriguing genus of bird, and fossils of this creature are actually known from many different places around the world, from North America to Europe and Asia. Our understanding of the physical life appearance of Gastornis has undergone various changes since it was first discovered in the 1850s, and the initial reconstructions of the creature were as a very crane-like bird due to the limited material known from the animal at the time. But now that more complete specimens have been uncovered, and even the skull is known to science, the true look of Gastornis is better understood. The largest species were capable of reaching heights of about 2 meters, and they possessed some incredibly massive skulls with tall beaks that appear to have been very powerful. Indeed, studies that have reconstructed the musculature and biomechanics of Gastornis' skull have found that they were capable of amazingly strong bites. However, there was no hooked tip to the beak and these details, along with some others, have led to a famous debate over the true lifestyle and diet of this bird, which we'll explore later. Gastornis did still possess wings, but they were very small and vestigial, and would not have been capable of lifting the animal into the air. This bird genus has often been reconstructed in Paleoart as being covered in very hair-like feathering, similar in appearance to ratites such as cassowaries, based on a discovery made in Colorado and published in 1923. This discovery involved the uncovering of a series of fairly long, fossilised filamentous structures which were interpreted by the paleontologist who described them as representing the feathers of Gastornis, though at that time it was called diatrima. So as a result, you will often see artistic restorations of the giant bird with very cassowary-like integument. But, as revealed by later research, these filamentous fossils turned out to not actually be the feathers of a bird. In fact, they were plant fibres. A much more recent discovery that might be attributable to Gastornis is a single veined feather from the same formation as the plant material. Due to the large size of the feather, it has been suggested that it could have belonged to the giant Gastornis, though currently there is no way to say for certain. So we've established that Gastornis would have been a pretty terrifying creature to come across, but why is it a terror duck? Well, that's because Gastornis is actually classified within the same group as the waterfowl, the ducks, geese and swans. This shared group is either the more inclusive Anseriformes, according to some researchers, or the larger group Anserimorphae, according to others. Either way, they share a close evolutionary relationship to living ducks and their kin, as well as an even closer relation to another group of giant flightless birds, the extinct Dromornithids, or Thunderbirds of Australia. But there is actually no relation at all to the forest rockets of South America. Despite converging on a similar appearance, these terror birds are in fact most closely related to the living South American Seriemas, and are placed in a larger grouping with the falcons, parrots and passerines. Currently there are six different species of Gastornis that are still accepted to be valid. The original type species, Gastornis parisiensis, was first described in 1855, based on a partial skeleton found near Paris. More remains originating from the same species were uncovered later on in the 1860s and 70s, and then in 1876, the infamous American paleontologist Edward Drinker Cope, one side of the legendary Bone Wars, described a new genus of giant flightless bird from New Mexico. He called this animal Diatrima gigantea. A few more Diatrima species were named in the following years and decades, including new material discovered in Europe. But then, by the end of the 20th century, once it had been realised that the original depiction of the crane-like Gastornis was incorrect due to it being based on a composite skeletal illustration, it was mostly accepted among paleontologists that Diatrima and Gastornis were so incredibly similar that they were probably the same thing. And since Gastornis was named first, all the species within Diatrima were moved into the older genus. Then there's also another genus, Zhongyuanus, described in 1980 based on an isolated bone from China, which in 2013 was realised to be an additional species of Gastornis, expanding the genus's range into Asia. 
The study reclassifying this Asian species as a member of the Gastornis genus also described how it seems the taxon first originated in Europe, where the oldest fossils are found, before spreading into Asia and North America. Though it's not certain whether Gastornis crossed into the New World across the Bering Land Bridge from Asia, or directly from Europe over the Turgai Strait. As I mentioned earlier, the matter of what this giant bird actually fed on has been quite the debate throughout the history of research on the animal. But originally, and when Diatrima was still thought to be distinct, it was mostly interpreted as a fearsome, fast-moving predator. Later studies then argued that Gastornis slash Diatrima, I'll just refer to everything as Gastornis from now on to make things easier, was in fact a very slow-moving creature that probably relied on ambushing prey, but still other studies recognised that the bird would have been quite fast enough to pursue the small prey it was presumed to have fed on. But did Gastornis even feed on meat at all? The massive beak and incredibly powerful bite seems to be the primary evidence in the argument for this bird's carnivory with a 1991 paper analysing the biomechanics of its jaws finding that it had excessively high safety factors in the way the skull was constructed for a herbivorous lifestyle, and as such, a carnivorous diet better suited the data. It seemed that the beak was simply too large and powerful to be adapted for feeding on comparatively softer plant material, and instead appeared to be more inclined towards bone crushing. But it's also been demonstrated that Gastornis apparently lacks a notable hooked tip to the beak, a feature which is often a sign of a carnivorous lifestyle, though not all carnivorous birds have a hooked beak and so this isn't really the best argument. The incredibly strong bite forces of Gastornis have also been suggested to potentially be an adaptation for cracking open hard plant matter such as seeds and nuts, instead of crushing bone and more evidence against the carnivorous mode of life was published in 2013, when a series of footprints found in Eocene-aged rocks in Washington were attributed to Gastornis but showed no signs of any raptor-like claws on the feet, supporting the idea of herbivory. However, probably the best evidence for Gastornis's true diet and way of life was published in 2014, in which a team of paleontologists compared levels of isotopes between Gastornis bones and those of modern carnivorous and herbivorous birds. Their results found that Gastornis only ate plants. The study further supported this with a reconstruction of the jaw musculature of this giant bird, finding it to be much more similar to herbivores than carnivores. A similar result was actually also reported at the Goldschmidt conference in 2013, when a different team of researchers looked at the composition of calcium isotopes in Gastornis bones to see what proportion of their diet was plant or animal based, finding that they matched fossils of herbivorous mammals and dinosaurs, but not carnivorous dinosaurs. So it now seems pretty conclusive that Gastornis was a primarily herbivorous creature that fed on tough vegetation and perhaps used its powerful beak to crack open hard nuts, but was not going around chasing small mammals and breaking their bones, though a potentially omnivorous diet is still argued by some to be a plausibility. Nevertheless, this huge duck relative would have been a formidable presence throughout the Paleocene and Eocene world, and despite it most probably being herbivorous, I still wouldn't have been keen to irritate one of these giant birds. Modern herbivores can still be incredibly dangerous, and just because they eat plants doesn't mean they won't also kill you, so I think Gastornis remains worthy of being known as the Terror Duck. Anyway, I really hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you would like to find out more about our world, its history, and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it, and if you would like to see more from us.